for linear programming. Okay, so last time we did uh, manifold suboptimization method. That's uh, if you do it for it was introduced for a general nonlinear program, but if you want to do it for a linear program, then it's called the simplex method. It's essentially the same idea as simplex method. So today for linear programming, we are going to study a specific algorithm called a fine scaling method. Uh, so this is a type of type of scale gradient projection method. OK? So the idea is I want to solve this problem, minimize C transpose X such that AX is equal to B and X is greater than or equal to 0 and X is in RN. Okay? And C is some arbitrary vector in RN. And let us for the purpose of this uh, class Assume that this uh, this problem has a solution. Okay, it's not a ill-posed problem that has no solution. It has some solution in this space. And by the way, this is a general form of linear programming problem. Okay, most of the linear programming problem can be cast in this particular fashion by either introducing more variables or reducing certain number of variables and so on. So you can always cast a linear programming problem in this fashion. Okay, so what is the, the scale gradient projection method? So you want xk plus 1 to be xk plus alpha k x bar k minus xk, right? Where x bar k is given by, anyone remembers? It's argmen. X in uh, capital X, so uh, argmin X greater than or equal to zero, A X equal to B, X in R N, C transpose X minus X K plus one over two S K X minus X K transpose. HK X minus XK. Okay. So what we need to find out, I mean what we have to do for this specific problem, right? This is the this is the scale gradient projection method for this problem, okay? Without a doubt. Now what we have to do for this problem is figure out these two parameters, SK and HK, in an appropriate fashion. These are the only two things we can play with in this particular problem. So parameter SK and HK. So these are the two parameters. We want to find out these two parameters for this linear programming problem that gives you a better convergence guarantee for this class of linear programming problem. Okay? So the question is, question we are trying to answer here, what is an appropriate HK and SK? at every point of time. So the first thing that I want to, uh, I want to do is the following idea. Okay, I want to introduce a, a, a very basic idea in optimization, uh, which is as follows. Uh, let me do it in a most more general fashion. Uh, 
well should i do it in a more general fashion well so here is here is what i want to do okay i want to find out i want to solve this problem without this constraint okay without this constraint of x greater than equal to 0 so i want to solve let's say x tilde k which is argument x in rn ax equal to b of c transpose x minus xk plus 1 over 2xk okay so we have removed this inequality constraint we have removed this inequality constraint here no x greater than 0 constraint Now, I mean with this, by removing this constraint, I can solve this problem exactly, okay, in an analytical form and the answer is that x tilde k is equal to xk minus sk hk inverse c minus a transpose lambda k, where lambda k you see the, how this the solution looks very similar to what we did in the previous class. A H K inverse A transpose inverse. Okay, this is this x tilde k is an exact solution to this optimization problem. And now my question is if I assume xk is strictly positive, sk is small, remember that sk is greater than 0, sk, sk here and hk, so sk is greater than 0 and hk is also a positive definite matrix sk is small is small then x tilde k will also be positive okay So what am I doing? I know that this has strictly positive entries. I know that this is by our choice, this is a very small number, right? What I'm claiming is that x tilde k will also be strictly positive, okay? So all the entries in x tilde k is going to be a strictly positive number. Are all of you convinced with this? My point is this is strictly positive this can be made as small as possible okay we can make it it's, it's our choice i can make it as small as possible so as to get a value of x tilde k that is exact that is completely positive okay all entries in x tilde k is exactly positive so let's say i do that okay let's say that's my choice here in this particular problem now i have added this constraint and i'm going to make my sk very small and i'm going to uh, assume that my xk is strictly positive number my question is whether x tilde k would be a solution to this problem or not. The problem in which I have constraint. That's my question. So the question is, is x tilde k a solution to star? And star is right here. Okay, let's do the proof by voting. <laughs> okay, that's a new kind of proof. So how many of you think this is true? Two? Few people? 
Okay, many people. How many of you think this is not true? Okay, <laughs> a few people, okay, there's no unanimous vote on this. Uh, so now we have to resort back to mathematics. Uh, okay, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so my claim is, I have an optimization problem. Well, let me write it, let me write it rigorously. My x1 is one constraint set, x2 is another constraint set. I want to minimize a function such that x is in x1 intersection x2. And let's say my uh, optimal value is x tilde. No, my active optimal value is x bar, uh, not value. I want x bar to be the optimal arg min. Uh, x bar equals arg min of f of x such that x is in x1 intersection x2 and my x tilde is arg min f of x such that x is in x1. Okay, and what I'm claiming is well, when I do, when I solve this problem, it turns out, when I solve this problem, it turns out that x tilde actually also lies in x2. Okay, so my x tilde turns out x tilde lies in this constraint set x2. So even though I didn't really consider x2 in my constraint set in this optimization problem, it just so turns out that if I solve this problem, over this set, turns out that, that x tilde also lies in x2, right? So my question is whether x tilde is a solution to this optimization problem or not, okay? That's my question, yeah. okay? So let's, let's think of it graphically, what's happening. This is my x1, this is my x2, so this is my x1, this is my x2, and I want to minimize the function here, so what I do, well, I remove this constraint set completely, I minimize my function only in this set, and it turns out that the solution lies here, this is my x tilde, okay? Because this also lies in the set x2, I can claim that x tilde is x tilde equals to x bar, okay? I can claim this proof by picture, okay? <laughs> Don't do that in examination. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so that's the idea here, okay? My set x1 is this ax equal to b constraint. My set x2 is x greater than equal to zero constraint. I remove x greater than equal to zero constraint. I solve this problem. Turns out that my x tilde k satisfies the constraint it satisfies this constraint, therefore x tilde k is also a solution to this problem. Yes. It just so happens. It's a, it's, no, it's not always. I'm not saying it happens always. All I'm saying is in this particular case, it turns out to be happening all the time. In this particular case, it doesn't happen all the time. I'm choosing my SK very, very small. And I'm starting from a point XK, which is strictly positive. Okay, let's, let's see uh, in this specific problem what's happening. Let me remove this part. Here is my coordinate. I want my XK, uh, I want my X to be in this, in this region. Okay, this is the positive cone. And so here is my xk. I am told to go in this direction and I am taking a very small step. Okay, so this is my x tilde k. And what I am saying is that since this x tilde k lies in the positive quadrant, it's also a solution to this problem. Okay, 
Yes. SK is an independent parameter. I can choose whatever I like. Yeah, but you still want to go to the minimum point. So that can be anywhere. Why is... No, why, why would that be anywhere? This is a quadratic function. It has a unique minimum. Yeah, but it could be negative. Yeah, but it could be negative. Right, but what I'm saying is, if my SK is sufficiently small, if my SK is sufficiently small, No, it won't. The, see, say I want to solve this problem here, okay? What you are saying is if I keep changing my SK, if I pick a value of SK that is sufficiently large, then my X tilde K will turn out to be here, okay, with SK large. But I'm not picking my SK large. SK is an independent parameter. I get to choose it. So I'm going to choose a very small number, 0 0.01, 0 0.001 whatever okay some small number so we are changing so we are changing the problem itself we are changing the function itself by picking a value of sk small i am changing the function completely this objective function changes as we change sk okay if it is 0 0.1 this term has certain weightage if it has become 0 0.01 this part has much more weightage Right? So I'm changing, by changing the value of SK, I'm changing the entire function completely. So that SK tilde lies in the positive quadrant. So yes, so that XK tilde lies in the positive quadrant. Okay? And what I'm claiming is, well, this XK tilde is also a solution to this problem where we had this constraint. It's, it's not an obvious point, but it's an important point, and we'll get back to it again when we talk about Lagrange multiplier theorem. Okay, all of you agree with this? And all of you agree with this result? Any further questions? No? Okay. So this is what I'll do. I am going to pick my So I'm claiming that my x bar k is going to be x k minus s k h k inverse c minus a transpose lambda k, where s k should lie in the set s greater than equal to zero such that x k minus s. Okay. So let me call this as S bar, S bar K to be uh, supremum or maximum. Uh, I somehow, I, I want to find, so let's define S bar K as a maximum value of S that's going to make at least one of the entries as zero. Okay, so S bar K is the maximum S max over all S such that X K minus S H K inverse C minus A transpose lambda K is greater than equal to zero. So basically my SK should lie 0 S bar K. Maybe it can include 0 as 0 and S bar K.
okay so if i pick my sk in this particular set i am guaranteed to have x bar k as a strictly positive number uh, so i want to write that as a claim what should i delete let me delete this part So if xk is positive and sk is in 0 s bar k, then x bar k is strictly positive. Okay, so now I have figured out what the value of SK should be. I still have to figure out or find an appropriate value of HK that will make this uh, algorithm converge faster. So one option is I take HK to be diagonal of XK raised to minus 2. Okay, what is diagonal of xk? So my hk is xk comma one, one over xk comma one square, one over xk comma n square, and zero in the off diagonal terms. Okay, so let's see what's happening pictorially when we have a function of this type or when we have hk as this. So what are we doing here? Uh, remember that in, uh, in the scaled gradient projection, we wanted to modify the space in such a fashion that it becomes advantageous towards our optimization problem, right? That was the idea of scaled gradient projection method. And in particular, we had yk equals hk raised to 1 half xk. Right? And we were trying to solve the problem in this coordinate space. So we are doing the same thing here, except that now, what happens at hk raised to half xk? So that's equal to 1 over xk comma 1, 1 over xk comma n, 0, 0, xk comma 1, xk comma n. What is this equal to? one right so we are warping the space in such a fashion that my xk always moves to one in the new space right so this is my old space and this is my xk at some random location in the new space it's always here Okay, so I always make sure that my space is moved in such a fashion that yk is equal to 1. And of course, my, uh, my original space, which is ax equal to b and x greater than or equal to 0, that also changes appropriately in this space. That constraint also changes appropriately in this space. Okay, so that's one interpretation of picking this 
uh, picking this method of HK. The other interpretation is what happens when a value of one value in XK is very, very small? What happens if XK1 is very, very small? Okay, so this term becomes extremely large, right? And what this makes, so what, what happens is then the, let's look at it in a figure. Let's say my XK1 is very, very small, okay? So I put a very high weight to this optimization problem at this location and then my new direction would be away from this boundary, okay? So in this particular optimization problem, you're always trying to move away from the boundary, okay? You're never trying to go towards the boundary, you're trying to move away from the boundary because of the way you have chosen your cost function. Okay, so does these two interpretations make, change, make sense? So one interpretation is in the new coordinate system, you're always at this location, your XK is always at this location, and then you're looking for an appropriate direction in which you want to move around this point. The other interpretation is by choosing that kind of uh, objective function, you're trying to move XK away from the boundaries, okay? So you're always in the positive quadrant, you're never going to be close to zero. Okay, always, always stay in the positive quadrant. So let me call this as capital XK raised to minus 2. So, so xk is diagonal of xk. Capital xk is diagonal of xk. So my iteration becomes, so this is my affine scaling method for linear programming. My iteration is xk plus 1 equals x bar k. x bar k equals or x bar k equals x k minus s k x k square c minus a transpose lambda k. This is my big X. Okay, and my lambda k equals a x k square a transpose inverse a x k square c. This is my affine scaling method for linear programming. Okay, and this, this, this algorithm was proposed in 1967, okay? This algorithm was proposed in 1967. Remember, when was simplex proposed? Simplex was proposed in 1940s, somewhere in 1940s, okay? So this was proposed after 20 years, okay? And it had nice properties in the sense that, remember, what is the difference between simplex and affine scaling? So in simplex, your idea is you have this constraint set, 
Okay, and in a fine scaling, you also have a similar constraint set. In this case, the idea is if I start from this point, I am going to jump from one point to another, one vertex to another, until I reach the minimum. Okay, so this is my x star. This was the idea in simplex method. In a fine scaling, the idea is I am going to move. I'm not going to go along this. In fact, I have to be strictly within the set. So I start from this point and I converge by going within the set itself. Okay, we are not going out of the set. We're going within the set. We are not touching any of the boundaries and I'm going to get very close to the optimal solution. This would be my X star. Okay, so in simplex, you exactly stand at x star, whereas in affine scaling, you go arbitrarily close to x star, but you never touch x star. The reason is that this algorithm specifically asks you to stay away from the boundary by giving it looking at the boundary. It's very so you always try to stay away from the boundary. So you start from inside the set, and then you move within the set and you get very close to your x star, but you never actually touch x star. Okay, that's my, that's the difference between this simplex and a fine scaling method. Yes. you always have to satisfy x greater than equal to 0 is an inequality constraint. What that amounts to is that you are always within the set, not at the boundary. Okay. So, So if my this term is very small, xk1 is very small, 